Your kingdom spouse is nothing like you want. But trust me, they are the one. Hallelujah, glory to God. Welcome to Purpose and Marita Bliss with Pastor Honorine. I have a word to share with someone. Someone who might be at the verge of not recognizing their kingdom spouse because they look nothing like what they want or they are nothing like what you want. Now, the Bible tells us, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, I prefer the Amplified Bible version. He says, and God said, it is not good for this man to be alone. I will make for him a helper that is suitable, that is accept, that is suitable, adaptable, and complementary to him. So the helper that God made is suitable this helper is adaptable and this helper is complementary. But today we are going to focus, right in this video, we are going to focus on the complementary aspect of it. Complementary means that they bring out the best in you and they cover up for the part that is missing. To be complimentary means that this person brings out the best part of you, but at the same time, they cover up for the part that is missing. The mistake we make most of the time is that you're expecting that the person who is supposed to be your kingdom spouse should be exactly the way you want. And most often what we want is you don't understand why he is so disorganized, but you are very organized. You don't understand why he talks too much or she talks too much, but you don't like to talk. You don't understand why you are so pushful and hardworking, but this other person is not that pushful. They are more, maybe not as pushful as you are. And these differences, it seems to, if you look in, you realize at some point, it seems like you two have some contradicting attributes. Like, and then you are like, why is this person not like me? Why are they not as prayerful as I am? Why is it that they don't like to study the word of God as much as I do? Why, why? why and then and, and then we start trying to change them to make them be like us to force them to be someone who can write just the same way we write who can read who is passionate about reading the way we are passionate about reading and sometimes we get frustrated and when it gets worse the very reason why you are in that person's life becomes the, the excuse that you are giving to leave. Because you failed to understand a certain detail. You failed to understand the intention, God's intention is in bringing the two of you together. Now, complimentary means that your strengths are his weaknesses and his weaknesses will most likely be and, and and his strengths will most likely be your weaknesses and vice versa if you're watching and you're a man so god will hardly give you someone who is exactly like you that's why your spouse may not be what you want but they will be exactly what you need and instead of trying now this is for two main reasons the first reason is that so that when the two become one you realize that the one that that, that the two have become is whole is complete and it's just perfect such that you can cover up for each other and that union doesn't have loopholes and then secondly, it is God's way to let you have value in the life, in the other person's life. Now, where, when your spouse is not organized and you are organized 
and then you have the tendency to clean up and organize after them. In your absence, three days, give them three days without you and the house will be so messy. They are going to start missing you from there. What am I saying? That what is your strength that is most likely your weakness is God's way to bring out your value, to let them know how valuable you are. Otherwise, if their strength is your strength and their weakness your weakness, it means the two of you coming together will only bring very strong, we will only be very strong in the point of your strength, but now in the point of your weaknesses, very weak and messy. So when God brings you to someone who is contrary to you, so that when you two come together, this person will begin to value you because there is something they lack that you feel up for. So they don't feel the need for that. Oh, your spouse has never loved laundry. They've never loved cooking. But then your passion, yes, cooking is good. But they, So they, they tend to spend a lot of money on to buy food. But then cooking is your passion and you know how to cook well so now they can be able to eat good food in the comfort of their homes so every time you are not around and they have to spend money to buy food they remember like ah if you were here if you were here i would not be spending this amount of money or when they buy and it's not as delicious as your own they will be like oh my god i'm missing something I'm missing something. Sometimes you have, your spouse might be an indoor person, someone who doesn't like to visit, but you are an outdoor person. You like to visit. You balance up so that friends and family will never have to complain. So you can visit on their behalf or you can force them and say, no, let's, it's been long we've visited this person. Let's pay them a visit. When they are not praying, they might be, they might be strong in studying the word, but you are stronger in, in prayers. When the two of you come together, you make a better union. You make a, you build a stronger bond. That is, excuse me, sorry about that. That is how you become instrumental to their lives. Don't look for who you want. Look for who you need. When you realize that you need this person in your life, you are going to be conscious about making that relationship work. You're going to be ready to put in what it takes to make things work. When you realize that you need this person in your life, you're going to value them. I pray that this word actually reaches the right person. I pray it blesses you and makes your relationship better. God bless you. Shalom.